My lords and lairds, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over an interesting little rifle setup. Well, technically a pistol. Thank you, ATF, for infringing on my rights. So today we're going over a gun that I got from this company called Wolfpack Armory. A little backstory. I don't think they're a huge manufacturer. I said that really weird. So Wolfpack Army, I don't believe they're a huge manufacturer. And you know, so they reached out, like a lot of companies will do. They said, hey, we're a fan of the channel. We would like to work with you to some capacity. And at first they were trying to alley -oop me up some AR-15s. Now here's the thing, guys, here's the thing. Uh, if I'm gonna be brutally honest, I don't care about really reviewing a generic like AR from companies. Your AR-15 to me has to like have some sort of standout feature or a really cool aesthetic or some sort of clone history if I'm gonna get an AR on the channel. Now, the reason is, is that AR-15 15s have gotten so good, so reliable, so affordable that just about any of them are gonna be okay. So like you throwing on a nicer barrel or like this rail with that, it's all the same to me. It's all the same to you guys, chances are. So when they reached out, they're like, hey, would you like an AR-15 on the channel? I thought absolutely not. But I checked their website and I saw this thing. And that's what definitely got me intrigued, to say the least. I got a little bit curious. I got a little bit, a uh, little inquirous. Inquirous, is that the right word? I said, hey, what about this bad boy? And they were like, well, we don't really do a lot of those, but we can. And so they sent over this gun along with 2,000 rounds of 7.62 by 39, to be clear, to, to clarify. And that's essentially how I got the gun. No exchange of money whatsoever, just ammo and the gun. Now, as far as attachments go, I threw on everything else, the Strike Industries brace. <laughs> the Mepro light red dot, surefire. And then thanks to my buddies over at Mr. Silencer, a local company here in Arizona, I like supporting the local guys. He let me borrow his Huxworks can. So we were doing a lot of shooting without the can and it's kind of going to be important because I think this can really does make the gun. Now we have the Huxworks flow through can on here. Really nice shooting experience with this can. And I can't thank Mr. Silencer enough for letting me borrow it. Thanks Eric for the ATF agent watching this. He is here, he is off the camera and everything is above board legally. Please do not send me to federal prison. I will not do well. Don't drop the soap big homie <laughs> all right now how did the gun do so we've been doing some shooting with the gun there's some things to go over let's dive on in so with this gun you will feel cool but you also have to dress cool so we have to thank this video sponsor americana pipe dream apparel fantastic young zoomers getting after it in the milsurp world you guys they have night vision knives lasers manuals and of course milsurp clothing and gear so head on over to that website check them out let them know that i sent you because i enjoy those guys very much and they would enjoy your business. So a big thank you yet again to American Pipe Dream Apparel. So what is this gun exactly? So essentially all it is is a Brownells upper on a Wolfpack Armory lower. So it's going to be their builded lower. It only really takes like a few different style of AK mags from what I've been finding so far. I have a number of AK style mags back at the house. So the only mags this really likes that I found so far is going to be the Gen 2 mags with the plastic lips. Now I tried the Gen 3 P mags with the metal lips. It did not want to get in the gun. Then I tried some Korean tanker mags and those actually worked in the gun, but some of my other metal mags did not. And that's something that they pointed out to me. That's gonna be a con on the gun in my opinion. I wish it could take more AK mags, but I'm sure the way it's cut out with the lower, it's just not happening. And then some standard AK mags. Well, that clicked in, it worked. So maybe, hold on folks happening live right now in the studio. So I wanted to interject real quick because admin out the range may have spoke too soon about the magazine issue. So what I was told by Wolfpack Armory is that the mags that work the best are gonna be the Gen 2 P mags with the plastic lips or the plastic tabs. But fast forward, we're in the garage now after using the gun quite a bit, we have worn off a lot of material inside of the mag well of the receiver or the low receiver. Some different AK mags have started to work. Some either by brute force jamming them in there or just by rocking it in rocketing it or just by rocking it in. I think that adds into the favor of this gun if your AK mags work with it. So I have an accoutrement of AK mags. All of them have worked except this guy, which I think might be a Romanian AK mag. It's the one that locks the bolt open to the rear. I just can't get her to really want to seat in there with the magazine tab locking to the rear. I'm not getting like a positive feedback. It could be maybe we just need to break it in some more. But I mean, it's not an ultimate demerit because I've even found with some of my AK platforms that it's still picky with certain mags. Like some mags, some of my AKs love, some mags, some of my AKs hate. So I think I was quick to judge there. Maybe if you wear it in some more, it'll work better with other mags. So I wanted to 
update you on that. Then the brown nose upper is gonna be in 762 by 39, chambered for that. And then we have the short stroke piston system in there. So pretty simple gun as it is. Now, when I got the gun, what was going on? When I got the gun, I essentially threw everything on it and there was a thing going on with the stock back here. You could probably see in some of the B-roll. And the stock back here when I got it, Strike Industries Picatinny adapter, I should say, was loose. And I was like, okay, like I tried to tighten it down with the screw back there. It wasn't working, but I still wanted to shoot it. And then it was just not a pleasant experience. Like I thought I could power through it, but that was not fun. So I was kind of irked about that. I wish that the gun came ready to rock and roll, but it was a little bit loose, but we salvaged it. We got it tightened down. We got it to manage to where it's not wobbling. And now it feels much better. Now, another thing I didn't like was the stock trigger they included. Stock trigger was just not rocking and rolling for me. I wanted to be able to shoot a lot better with it. My follow-up shots, unsuppressed, felt super clunky. It felt like there was a lot more recoil with the stock wibbling with the stock wobbling, it was just not a pleasant shooting experience. And then running it unsuppressed, one, I mean, it's a short barreled, you know, 762 by 39. So it's very loud, it's very concussive. <laughs> shot it indoors at the indoor range unsuppressed and it was like setting off a grenade every time you pulled the trigger so it was really fun in that regards and my cameraman behind the camera he loved it and he could feel his teeth rattling that was a neat little factoid so that shooting experience wasn't as optimal yet again i was just powering through it but today the shooting experience is so much better so what we did we have the can on here of course and then i swapped out the trigger for a geyser trigger because it can take ar triggers in this lower and now the shooting experience with all those together way better really salvaged the gun because at first i was like man i am not having a fun time shooting this but once we got all those kinks worked out so much better so they kind of get a demerit there for not coming with the stock ready to go and then the trigger is just a stock trigger so if you want to swap that out i don't really hold that against them it helps keep the cost down a little bit too of course if you run it suppressed way better wow what a difference i want to try and bump fire it so they also swapped out the charging handle that comes on the normal brn one of the uppers for a different style charging handle which I would have been indifferent to, but I think I kind of like this one more. It's a little bit beefier, so when you're reaching around for that reload, a little bit easier to grab. The normal BRN 180 charging handle looks a little bit more of that classic AR 180 charging handle, which is kind of thin. It looks cool, but how much more do you prefer it? That's on you. I don't know. I like this one, but the vibes are important. So if it's a, if it's a vibe deal breaker, I don't know. Now I did see some negative reviews of the BR 180 upper itself from another gun tuber I'm a big fan of, Ivan of Kit Badger. I like Ivan. He's a great shooter. I've seen him shoot. Wow, what a great shooter Ivan is. One of the best. He's pretty solid. So I like that guy a lot. Now I saw his video with a similar concept, but he had a more AR-15 style lower that took the 7.62x39 AR style mags. And he was running into a lot of issues with the steel cased, I think Russian ammo. You know, it could be the ammo there, could be the lower. I just know he had an issue. So I'm reporting this back to you guys for your information. Not how I wanted this to end. Now that video is over a year old. I think that came out in 2022. So Brownells could have fixed it. The issues that I ran into with this this gun weren't the light primer strikes that Ivan was having. A lot of times it was just the issue to feed in general or a failure to eject the case like you saw in the video. So overall, there could be some more kinks that need to be worked out with this gun. My own personal experience, I don't feel comfortable using this as like a duty gun. I like that it's in my collection. I think it's neat, but as it stands right now, it's not passing the duty gun vibe check and it's just very weird of a setup when I'm an American and AR-15s exist. So there is that. To be fully transparent, I wouldn't necessarily call this a super duper in-depth firearms review with the amount of ammo that we had and put through the gun. I wouldn't necessarily call it like, all right, we burned it down. We found all the weak points. It's more so a showing off of the gun and then going from what the knowledge that I have there. So take everything I do and say with a grain of salt is what I'm trying to say. I'm just a dude on the internet. I am just one man and I, I failed algebra two in high school, buddy. So I'm not that smart. Now with this gun, I will say that it is fun to get something a little bit different on the channel. It's a bit more fun than say some of the other stuff that we have. And overall, I like the vibe and the look of it. Now, how did it do? Well, there's a few things about the gun that I also didn't like and feeding was one issue that we found. So every once in a while, we've had some feeding issues with the gun. Casing's just not wanting to get in there or not wanting to extract proper. With this flow through can, we're not running it on the suppressed setting because the gases just aren't coming back in to really matter. And then when I'm trying to prone out and take more accurate distance shots with it, which is kind of like a, you know, for my level of shooting, 
shooting, trying to shoot out to like 400 yards with uh, a 10.5 7.62 by 39. It's optimistic, it's very doable, I'm sure. But the problem is, I'm sure I'm the limiting factor. But when you're proned out and say you're trying to use the mag as a, another tripod in your stable shooting platform, uh, I was finding that the gun was having some malfunctions and it was not wanting to work in that regard. Now I will say, blowing past all that, that I did get interested in the idea of the AR style controls mixed with the 762 by 39 round. So I got really interested in this platform because of photos coming out of Africa. And those photos consisted of mercenaries running a AR style platform in 762 by 39, which I thought was really interesting. If there's guys actually doing this in a much more riskier profession than YouTubing, <laughs> I wanted to give it a shot. Essentially, I was like, you know what? I think this is an interesting style of concept to go over because 762 by 39 does have some advantages. And for how I would use this gun in my hypothetical defensive tactical guy setting, I actually think it's kind of cool in that aspect. If I think of this as not like your go-to fighting rifle, but instead it's almost like a mini H car compared to your normal AR. And what I mean by that is a PDW. So like if I think of this as a overmatched PDW, then I kind of like it a lot in that regards. As far as being like your go-to rifle, like your, your go-to-war rifle, your end-of-the-world rifle, not necessarily a fan, but if I think of this as like a backpack gun where it's your overmatch, say if you're worried about people with handguns or shotguns, then I start to really like it because it becomes much more interesting. So when you break the gun down, it becomes much more compact. Now, once you ditch the suppressor, of course, too, it really increases the chances of fitting into a bag and being a good bag gun. So it goes along the vein of that PDW. Now, when you match it with the 20 round mags, the overall silhouette, very compact. And that's where I'm starting to be like, okay, maybe there's some merit there. Maybe you want to go hiking or something with that. You stuff this into your hiking kit to some capacity. And now if you're like, oh, hey, there's a, a mountain lion that I see that's stalking me. You know, you take the time to whip it out. Wait a second. And then you have a 762 by 39 that is gonna be probably a lot more optimal, definitely optimal, than say whatever handgun you have on you as well. I would rather have this if a bear was like lurking around than just say my Glock 17 or even like a 10 mil Glock. <laughs> AAC, the ammo sponsor of the channel RAR XD. Now, the ammo sponsor of the channel, AAC, I am plugging them right here. They did not have, at the time of filming this, any 7.62x39, the rumor to come out with it. But what I did run was the ammo that Wolfpack Armory sent, which is going to be some 123 grain brass case corrosive ammo. I want to say it's PPU. I'm totally blanking. We'll have to double check. But that is important detail to mention for the video for this part because of what kind of ammo. It's, it's an important thing to talk about within gun reviews. So as far as pop culture goes with a particular BRN 180 like this with the newer ones, I haven't seen that much. And when I IMFD beat it, I didn't see much. The only thing I really saw of note was the 300 blackout version of the BRN 180 being used in Ready or Not. And it's a fun video game. It's like a SWAT shooter. They have certain mods for you they can play with. It is still a very new weapon system. So it doesn't have that much pop culture significance. Now, of course, an obvious advantage that this thing has is going to be the AR style controls on this lower as opposed to say if you wanted to run 762 by 39 in a more traditional AK platform. I do love my AKs. I love running AKs. You're a commie or something? <laughs> One of their downsides to me is their more dated style controls and that is just the safety getting to the trigger. I mean it's not that bad and I think other platforms have tried to modernize it but I think they had a fun concept here with this lower because all the safety is is just very familiar 45 degree throw with a AR style control group and an AR style trigger which really does open up what kind of triggers you want to put in there like I said I went with Geisley. Now the lower itself not taking other AK mags is kind of a limiting factor because you're stuck to the mags that work with the gun. Then we get to the upper. So it is cool to see a much more prevalent usage of like AR-47s, you know, with a lower like this paired up with a unique style BRN-180 upper, it's not necessarily as, you know, AR-15-ish because now there's no buffer system you have to worry about and you can reduce the overall signature of the gun, i.e. the stock or the brace in this instance, ATF. And now you have a much more compact package. And then with a BRN-80 upper, you have a monolithic rail. So if you want to throw a bunch of attachments on, a lot more easy to mount stuff than say an AK. Now, it's kind of like that same thing of like the AR and this kind of having the similar real estate for mounting stuff. So it's kind of like between the poison that you want, which one do you want to go with? Pick your poison. 
pick your poison, buddy. But I will give the gun props. Like I said, it has a good look to it. It has a nice aesthetic, which is important because you want to feel cool. Did I, say, did I say cool? It's important because you want to feel cool. You want to feel like you got it going on. The way the gun sits in the arms and the hands, you can really get a good C clamp to feel like a high-speed operator to really ride that gun if you want to do some fast shooting so you can look cool for Instagram on the flat range. And I think overall, the vibe is there. A little bit of the performance was not exactly what I wanted, but hopefully they can work out the camera in that aspect. Maybe it just has to do with some more lube on my part because lubing stuff is important. You don't want to go places without your lube, man. Always a plane. Always a plane. <laughs> I say to thee, people of Israel, pick up your Wolfpack 47s and we will defeat the land of Canaan. <laughs> That's pretty good. So another tree of thought that I had along the vein of the PDW vibe is that it could be another variant of say like the 300 Blackout MCX or like the Rattler in that sense. It's not as compact as a Rattler, but if you're running subsonic 762 by 39, you could pair this and you could have a very quiet PDW in that sense. So I kind of like the idea of that. <laughs> Can't shoot.